Pleasure. Hey, welcome to this uh, Wednesday noon and evening Bible lesson today. Thank you for joining and tuning in. May the Lord bless you. May the Holy Spirit smile and shine upon you, give you directions, sometimes stop you, sometimes lead you, and sometimes touch you. Pray that God's will will be done in your life. Join me as we come into a Bible lesson that I believe will be a blessing for you. Acts 16 chapter, starting at the uh, sixth verse. Acts 16 and six, concluding to the 15th verse. The Lord is good. I want to thank God for smiling on us today. Uh, Mother's Day has passed, and uh, some mothers passed during Mother's Day. Uh, my um, prayer and concern is for a sister uh, we call Cookie. Her name is Sandra Cotton, and we're praying. Her mother passed on Mother's Day. Uh, what a um, shocker. What a disturbance. But God is a comfort and mercy. That service will be here at the Little Missionary Baptist Church this Friday. Uh, family hour will be 10 to 11. Funeral will be at 11 o'clock this Friday. Uh, that date will be uh, what I consider the 15th. Um, May the 15th, um, Sister um, Cookie Mother prayed Praise God for her presence. I've got to meet her maybe three times in my life. She was the church first piano player, uh, once a choir director, and just instrumental in the growth of the Little Missionary Baptist Church. Sister Cookie had been with her, oh, going on over a decade now. We've just been blessed because God added to the church such as he seemed fit. And so please keep that family in prayer. Um, the Lord is good. Uh, our message today, join me, Acts 16. I want to say in the six verses, it says, now when they had gone throughout. I want to say, uh, who was they? Uh, it's Paul and Silas. Um, if you would read the 15th chapter, you'll see they came to uh, Debris and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believer, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported by the brothers that was at Lystra. And him whom Paul had to go forth with him and took circumcision him, circumcision him because of the Jews which was in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Sometimes people can have information on your background and you've got to maneuver uh, to position yourself that they'll receive you. Uh, you know, the Bible said if meat offend your brother, don't eat it before him. I'm not teaching legalism, I'm teaching wisdom. Some people, um, to he that don't have faith is a stumbling block. To him that have faith is not a stumbling block. So praise God for the saints that are free in the word of God and not bound by restriction. So Paul and them had strengthened the word of God in Jerusalem and uh, they are now moving forth. Paul wanted to do just what the Holy Spirit had instructed the 12. Uh, if you can follow with me in Acts, the first chapter, I think that'd be a good reference. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem, now they them did that, and in Judea, and in Samaria. Now Paul and them had ministered in those three regions. Uh, the twelve disciples took care of Jerusalem, uh, and Paul had ministered throughout Judea and Samaria, but the Lord didn't stop there. And he said, and unto the othermost parts of the earth. That's where Paul Nam has now said they've gone through all throughout. And it names some of the cities, uh, Pygram and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden. Now the Holy Spirit has put a hindrance. And I want to label this subject when the Holy Spirit push you back to move you forward. Say that again with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. When it push you back, when it push you back 
to move you forward. To move you forward. Yes, that's here. Sometimes I desire uh, our um, flush, our thought, our wisdom, our knowledge, our calculations, our thoughtfulness puts us in a direction that God says no. Listen what the text says. And were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. They want to go to Asia, but the Holy Spirit said, no, I can't have it. And I want to say uh, the Holy Spirit will forbidden us to save us. There's some season we're not ready for something, and the Holy Spirit will say no. Praise God that the Holy Spirit is working in your life to say no. And you got enough spirit to say yes to the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? And you got enough spirit. There's a, there's a, there's a spirit of a man, a spirit of a woman. You can call it in carnal, I'll call it a spirit because we're spirit. And even the spirit is subject to the prophet. You've got to learn how to command your spirit. Yes, I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit. It rests and rules and abides in me. It has caused me to bring the flush under subjection. The flush got a spirit. It want to do its thing. And you've got to learn how to say, yes, Lord. That's something you in control of. The Holy Spirit just don't. You ain't going. It gives you convictions. It gives you signs. Now, you can keep denying the signs and you can seize your conscience. That's what Paul wrote to Timothy. Some have seized their conscience. You can keep pressing your will until the Holy Spirit says, go on. But praise God, I'm under the unction or the direction or the authority of the Holy Spirit. I'm sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding me to. What is telling me? Can you have an ear to hear? Well, train your hearing to the Holy Spirit. Learn how to know that's the Holy Spirit. The more you deny the voice of him, the, the, the smaller the voice gets, the frequency fades away. You want the frequency to come in. You want HD hearing. Did you hear me? Y'all know what HD is. High definition. Come on, somebody. You want, you want Holy Ghost definition. Oh, I, I done stumbled up on something now. I can see it in the face of grandson. He said, you're talking now, granddad. Did somebody don't say amen. amen. Listen here. I'm talking about something that you, you want to be sensitive. You're so stubborn. You're so in your will. You try to imitate the voice of the Holy Spirit to yourself. I know you're in the church. I know you read your Bible. I know you say God said it. But you're making the Holy Spirit your voice. No, let it be his voice. And you can always find it in the word of God. You ain't got to say, I don't know what it says. Go to reading your Bible. Go to giving God some time so you can identify, ooh, there it is. I wish somebody helped me here. That was Sunday morning sermon. You should have joined us here. My daughter said something so powerful as we were riding down the road. I just, you know, used my family says good sermon and it becomes so traditional. I think that's just their response. But it wasn't just a response. She said, Daddy, that sermon spoke to my soul. And then she went on, she said, I've read that passage. I know about Saul and Silas in jail, uh, but I never picked up that woman, Lydia. That's who we're talking about. And then, you know, she was having dialogue with her mother, but they were speaking to me. And, you know, and she looked at her brother Joseph and said, can I get an amen? <laughs> Boy, that blessed my soul. That's why I'm talking about it today. It's something that when you can say, I can hear the Holy Spirit working on my children. As I was preaching, my daughter said to my wife, Mama, make sure he hydrates. He preached hard today. I'm like, what you know about me preaching hard? Yeah, she was in tune. He was in tune. Oh, Brother Joe had, he said, I put you in lockdown mode. 
I said, what's that, Joe? He said, I was locked on you. You, you could have sent out uh, those distractors. You know when they send a missile at a plane and they try to get away. What is that called, grandson, when the plane shoots out those fake heat missiles to distract the bomb? Well, Joe said, no, I, I, I what'd you say, grandson? Uh, flares. Flares, there you go, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the saints try to send out those flares, like, hey, amen, but they ain't really in the sermon. But when you're locked in, the flash, y'all don't hit me. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, that, that, yeah that, it hit the spot, as old brother Joe would say. And so I pray that the teaching will hit the spot. I pray that you would understand that God is trying to forbid something in your life because he has a new direction for you. And he will bring it to pass sooner or later and make clarity to where he's leading you. Let me show you what I mean. The Holy Spirit will forbid you, even though you try it again. Look what 7 says. After they will come to Myers, they are said to go in to buy Thida, but the Spirit suffered them not. Now, okay, they done went to this place, the Spirit forbid them. They went to this place, the Spirit for, forbid them. Sometimes you know, why can't I get my way? That's what your spirit cried out. That's what you'll flush. Why are you always acting like I'm, I'm doing something? The Holy Spirit know you up to something. And it, it loved you enough. The, somebody say chastise. Chastise. Yes, yeah, you know the Bible said he chastised them in love. He forbid some things for his children to, to expose themselves to. Praise God for less exposure. Somebody said cover me. Help me somebody. Y'all know that's what Noah's oldest sons did to him. He had got drunk and the young boy went to told daddy in the tent drunk and he naked. But the oldest boys didn't even come look at him. They bagged him up and covered him. We need some mature folk help cover the saints that mean so much to the body. Somebody talking here with me. Some of us, soon we find out something negative about a leader, we'll pick up the phone or get on Facebook and share with everybody. But somebody ought to back up. Say back up, grandson. Back up. And cover him. And cover him. Yeah, mercy. I feel like teaching here tonight. Good God Almighty. Thank God for you that have tuned in. Call a friend, tell a neighbor. Y'all ought to tune in today because he telling it today. Yes, God is good. You need to know the Holy Spirit is working on you. Trying to save you for his purpose. And he'll make it clear. Look what the verse said now. Um, and they're passing by my came to Troy's. Now you don't got to a place. God can deal with you when you get to a certain area in your life. When you get to a certain marker in your life. When you get to a certain maturity in your life. When you get enough word in you. When you get enough prayer life in you. When you get enough commitment. God will let you see the beauty that's been there or that you've been overlooking. Somebody can't see the forest for the trees. Have mercy. Still didn't make much sense to me but I repeated it and said it because it's been told of me. Isn't the forest made out of trees? <laughs> Somebody said. Granddaddy said now. Nah. <laughs> He's been wondering the same thing, but praise God, I spoke it on his behalf. Let me tell you, you at a location now that God gonna bring something to. You don't calm down. You're not as mad as you are. You you thinking now. Now God can speak to you when you done made room for God. Somebody say, get to the place. Get to the place. Where God, where God can deal with you. Can deal with you. Have mercy. Now they're here and look at that conjunction. Somebody said a conjunction. A conjunction. Function. Yeah, y'all remember that little show. My wife would teach my beloved children through that show. I just love it. I, I just like the music, but I never knew they was learning. I heard my wife teaching her great nieces near uh, vows, and she was singing a song, and I just started laughing. I said, look like I missed that class. <laughs> but I needed it. But I heard, and it's a conjunction. When he got to this city, and a vision appeared, to Paul, immediately, let me see, appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. <laughs> he wasn't sitting, he wasn't sleeping. There stood a man at Macedonia. 
and prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. Paul had the spirit of help in him. It's good to want to help people, isn't it? You ought to respond to people's call. Some of you can't hear people saying help. I don't care how they spell it. I don't care how they say it. And they don't always spell help, H-E-L-P. Sometimes they spell help by saying, will you stop doing this to me? Sometimes they spell it, explain this to me. Sometimes they spell it by saying, do you know her? Do you know him? Will you go with me? Sometimes they just look forward to your presence. Thought about how the Holy Spirit had talked to me. I went to get me some chicken and the Holy Spirit said, get your uh, mother, mother in love. Praise God for my wife. I heard she's spelling mother-in-law, mother in love. I'm going to steal that after I say it a couple of times as I always say. Yes, I give Sister Hines some credit. She brought me into a, a, a different area. I was at a place that I didn't always hear, but now I'm at Troy. And I can hear. Y'all Y'all ought to get to Troy. Somebody said get to Troy. Get to Troy. Yes, that's what we're at. we got to move from where we want to go to where God can use us. Yes. He said, come over and help us. Now the Holy Spirit is leading you when you're at a place that it can give you direction. Are you at that place? My daughter said to me to identify in the sermon, she said, Dad, I was at a place in my life in Lansing, and I asked God, if you want me to go here, give me a sign. And she said she looked and saw a, a burning bush, and then I come to church and you preaching about that bush. Yeah, no grandson shaked his head. He said, yeah, that's pretty fine. I talked about it was just a bush ain't nothing you pay a lot of attention to unless it's on fire. And God can catch something that you ain't paying attention to on fire to get your attention, to get you down to Pharaoh's house. Somebody ought to get to Pharaoh's house. Yeah, that's what God did. Took some normal children. I said normal children to speak out and to speak against injustice. In WACP, those were young people. And then when that voice got quiet, God took just some sisters and said, enough in killing our babies. Black lives do matter. And that, that was just a bush. God caught on fire. Took a man by the name of George Floyd. Not a superstar, not LeBron. Not Stephen Curry. Not President Obama. Just took a man. I could hear the song of the old tree. He sacrificed his life. Y'all know how they used to sing that about Jesus. That's what George Floyd, he, he never saw what he contributed, but the whole world know his name. Because God caught a bush on fire. Something that somebody would have walked by didn't think much of it. But it's what God used. Many children have died. They was, they was the wood on the fire. But it always take kindling to get something burning. I wish somebody helped me here. Get, receive the message today. God will use the less to get more. God will take the foolish things and confine the wise. Somebody going to hear me today. I feel like reaching you today. May the spirit of God touch your life. Lead you. You at a place, now God can deal with you. And he'll deal with you. It won't be what you need, but look what he heard. A man stood and asked him to come over to Macedonia and help us. That's the Holy Spirit was leading. And it says, and after he, I'm in the 10th verse, had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gathering that the Lord had called us they, now their desire is meeting with God's desire. You can have a desire, but it don't mean it's God. Now. But when your desire line up with God's desire, said, now we, let's go over here because we want to preach. We preachers now. 
You know, oh, we'll talk to you to death if we can't preach to you. <laughs> that was grandson. Let him preach because he keep talking. But but if he preach, yeah, I, I can hear grandson. Come on, granddad, we on that. Get to the text. Get to the text. But he don't know preaching is in me. Yeah. I heard somebody say, man, why you talk like I like it's preaching in me. And it, it just burps and run over my cup. Somebody says, cup. cup. Run it over. Run it over. Have mercy, God Almighty. Yeah, you can't talk about him long with me and my preaching don't kick in. <laughs> That's what that old girl said, you old golden tongue fool. Yes, the Lord is good. Eh? Yes, God is good. I feel like shouting because God has been good to me and I hadn't always been to the place that I can see his goodness. I repeat it, he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. But I can see and understand it's a blessing just to sleep at night. Hey, help me somebody. Thank God and, and can get up in the middle of the night and pray for your family and pray for those that are suffering. That's when God can deal with you. I would, are you at a place that God can get you out of selfishness and get you into kingdom love? Yes, praise God from whom all blessings. Yes, therefore loosing from chore. Hey, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, you got to get from where God uh, can deal with you. Some of you just want to stay where God and dealt with you. Some of you have been at a church too long. God trying to move you from that place that he, he elevated you, from that place that he developed you, from that place that he instructed you. Now he got to send you to a place that you can help somebody. Help me somebody. The place you at, you helping yourself. But you need to go to the place to help you. Yeah, I can 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 help you. work on those pronunciation of words that's what I do I got a great help wife son and daughter uh, they work with old dad I said my I have to have a weakness so I can stay on my knees you'll get too comfortable with your gift make sure you got a thorn in the flush hammers and from thence to Philippi which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia. You know, like the state of Michigan is Macedonia. Lansing is Philippi. In this perspective, Jackson, Michigan. <laughs> Praise God. And a colony. And we was in that city abiding certain days. Um, it don't happen when you just get there. It just don't happen in your marriage because you get married. It just don't happen because you get a job. It just don't happen because you get a degree. It just don't happen because you get a check. You got to buy it some days. Somebody in too big of a rush. Abide your time. You're going to get everything you want, just not right now. First seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things be added to you. I have one truck and three cars but I didn't get them all at one time. I did not get one new one. I've got one old truck as my daughter said I got three used automobiles, but I accumulated them over the last 20 plus years. But it took me 35 years of putting away, getting stuff in the process. I wanted to buy a Bronco Jeep here. 
I went by, it was $5,500. I went back the next day and asked the owner, what's the best you could take? He said, for you, Reverend Hines, 4500 I took some pictures. I sent it to my friend because I wanted to do body work on it. I wanted to have my 60th project. And um, I went back out the next day, and the man says, somebody's coming to see it, Reverend, but call me in an hour. I'm pretty sure they'll be here. My friend texts me who's in the body shop business, who have sold a, bit, a body shop for millions of dollars and bought another body shop. He texted me, he said, Pastor Hines, I've seen some of those pictures. I don't think you should touch that. I was down, but I had preached Sunday. I um, found out Monday the man sold the vehicle. That was to me, the Holy Spirit was forbidding me. And I aligned my spirit to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is leading me through a man who knows projects and what it takes. He restores cars, uh, I mean from the ground up. And so I'm blessed to go back to my boyhood or my childhood of building my first hot rod in my parents' garage. I mean literally house garage. My dad owned a garage business. I ended up painting a car at his garage, but I built it and I had great pride in that car. I'm just saying how you can have something, give time that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Don't just grab the first thing your eyes see. Pray about it. If it's a thousand dollar item, definitely pray about it. Don't be emotional about it. The Holy Spirit will lead you and you can abide there a couple of days and the Holy Spirit will get some roots and give birth to what I call the Holy Spirit to touch you. It says, and on the Sabbath day when he went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wrought to be made, we sat down and spoke unto the woman which resorted there. In that Philippi, the Jewish law says you can't have a synagogue without 10 Jewish men. You remember when Abraham told God, spare the city with Lot? He said, if I find 50 righteous men in God, he said, if you find 10, I'll save it. Well, if you read Acts, the 10th chapter, Six chapters before, around the second verse you hear, the emperor had declared that in Jews had to be expelled from the Roman colony. Philippi was part of the Roman colony. Macedonia was part of the Roman government. But there was women who were still hanging there, and they was having prayer down by the riverside. That's just like when, when men are hiding in the upper room. They'll go to the cemetery. God had a man there, Paul. And there, there was a woman with the spirit of hospitality that touched them because God had touched her. Let me read 14. And a certain woman named Lilia, a seller of purple of the city of Thy, a trier, <coughs> which worshiped God, heard us who heart the Lord opened. Discipleship is truly a God's program. If God didn't open her heart, she couldn't have faith to hear them. They spoke the word, but God had opened her heart. It's nothing wrong with the seed, it's something always wrong with the soil, the condition of the heart. A soil went out to sow seed. There was four grounds. There was only 25% of good soil. But you don't need 100% to do a God work. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. When your heart is open, you'll attend to the things that are said. I have some members that are just in tune. I can say it. Um, we have an offering today and we need to bless somebody. 